So you started a retinoid to make sure that your skin looks smooth and clear and bright and refreshed like this, but it ended up red, irritated, peeling, flaking, and looking a bit more like this. Retinoids are amazing, but yes, they can cause irritation. And we need to break down exactly why this happens, how to actually start a prescription retinoid, and what to do about it to prevent this from happening. As you know, there are many forms of retinoids, things over the counter, such as retinol or retinol. Now, while these are great, these are different than prescription strength retinoids. Now, prescription strength retinoids can be in a league of their own. This is what's called tretinoin or retinoic acid or all trans retinoic acid. It has a couple of different names, but basically this is the potent stuff. And this is the stuff that you can't buy over the counter. You can only get it as a prescription, such as from your doctor or dermatologist or through an online pharmacy like Dermatica, who we're working with on a portion of this video. But when it comes to these prescription strength retinoids, if you've got them in your hand, how do you avoid the peeling, the flaking, and the retinization that a lot of people experience? Now, retinoic acid or tretinoin is known to be more potent because it is bioavailable. Well, what does that mean? Bio is the word meaning life, and available means, hi, it's here, ready to be used. And that's basically what this ingredient does for skin. It is ready to be used by our skin with absolutely no changes needed, whereas something like retinol has to become retinal, and retinal has to become the retinoic acid. This stuff is good to go. And this is actually a little bit of the pure form. Look at us, look at us. Look at us, look at us. We are chemistry, wow, we are special. Wow, we are potentially dangerous, like, be careful kids, just gonna put that down over there. Now, while you can get irritation with any strength of a retinoid, it is more common to have major irritation to the prescription stuff, AKA the strong stuff. And usually this shows up in a couple of different ways. It's usually redness, it's usually irritation, it's usually peeling. And yes, even if you're oily and you never have dry flaky skin, starting a full strength retinoid can make your skin peel and get irritated just like this. And the reason this happens is because retinoids actually speed up skin cell turnover and they increase the thickness of your skin in the deeper layers. Retinoids bind inside of our skin to specific receptors. One is literally called the retinoic acid receptor and it actually causes changes deep within our skin. A lot of people think that retinoids are exfoliating because when you use them, your skin kind of feels like it's peeling or sloughing off, but that's not actually exfoliation. That's actually your skin cells turning up the rate at which they're creating new skin cells in those deeper layers and pushing the top ones off. So it looks like it's thinning out your skin and it looks like it's making it flaky, but your skin is actually becoming thicker in the deep layers called the dermis, which is why retinoids have been known to be so helpful for things like acne, for scarring, for pigmentation, and even for scars, which can be really, really hard to treat with topical medications. So let's say that you do want to use the prescription stuff. You'll want to use the strong stuff. How do you acclimate your skin to getting used to this without all of that irritation. Well, there are some tips and tricks that I am telling you. If you do these, you'll be able to start a retinoid the right way. You'll actually be able to experience the benefits of retinoids without all of the rigmarole, without all the mishigas of trying to go through and deal with the flakiness and the irritation that people who aren't skin intellectuals and aren't subscribed often have to deal with. One of the best ways to avoid irritation is titration. What is titration, you may ask? Well, it's starting things slowly. And I know that is so difficult, but when people say use a pea-sized amount to start, literally use a pea-sized amount to start. And instead of putting your retinoid on morning and evening, use it just in the evening and try doing it once or twice a week. You can then build up three times until you graduate to daily use once a day and then maybe even twice a day. And again, it's always best to talk to the prescribing physician, basically the person who gave you the prescription to ask what's best. Because even prescription strength retinoids come in different amounts and you wanna make sure that you're using them appropriately. Again, your doctor or derm or whoever prescribed it should be able to tell you that. Or Dermatica actually connects you with dermatologists online who can literally give you a customized treatment plan. So if you have a question on when you should start, when you should stop, what is too much, you can literally chat with them and they say that they'll get back to you in a couple of days, but I've always found my prescriber to get back to me in a couple of hours. But titration is important and it has nothing to do with tying ties or sailing across the nations on the Titanic, but it is all about starting low and taking things slow in the words of Dr. Alexis Stephanie. And while titration is great, don't forget about sandwiching. We're not talking about peanut butter and jelly. We're not talking about salami or the veggie bacon. We're talking about sandwiching your moisturizer with your retinoid. This is personally one of my favorite ways to use my prescription strength retinoids, especially when I am reintroducing a retinoid into my routine or kind of bumping up the percentage or the amount that I'm using. Sandwiching is basically creating layers of your moisturizer with your retinoid and then with your moisturizer again, if you're prone to getting dry, 
dry or just kind of buffering your skin using a moisturizer with your retinoid on top. So for example, this is my Dramatica prescription. It works great for me, but let's say that it's a little bit intense or I haven't used it in a few weeks. I'm ready to restart, but I don't want to go through retinoid retinization. I could literally take a moisturizer that I like, such as this one, which is a snail mucin cream, but it's vegan and it's made of yams. This is a story for another day, but I could take this, put this on first and then put my retinoid over top. Now, if it's winter and I'm prone to getting dry, I could even do another layer of this. And in essence, it's creating kind of like this barrier that protects my skin from the retinoid, but still allows it to absorb. Now you can also use other things. For example, this is a deep sea hydrating mask from Skin Inc. This is really good, really expensive, but I've been loving it. And if you have super dry skin, using this as a way to buffer your retinoid can be fantastic. Now here's the problem. Some people try to do sandwiching, but they don't just try to make a good old peanut butter and jelly sandwich that's gonna make everyone happy. They try to go for like the 17 layer BLT. And honey, sometimes we need to leave the fancy sandwiches for the fancy chefs. What are you? An idiot sandwich. You see, some people try to get super fancy with their sandwiching and they start mixing things like an exfoliating serum with a vitamin C moisture, sandwiching that with a retinoid with something else on top. And there are certain ingredients that retinoids just don't play well with if you are starting a new one. For example, vitamin C. Vitamin C is amazing. When it is combined right, it can be used with retinoids. But if you're just starting a prescription strength retinoid, now is not the time to play around. If the peanut butter and jelly sandwich gets the job done and gets the stomach happy and stops the tummy from being hungry, babe, we got to keep the stomach happy without causing any nausea, indigestion, upset stomach or diarrhea. Hey, Pepto-Bismol. Now, what ingredients should you mix with a retinoid or avoid with a retinoid? It can be very complex, and we actually have other videos on that. Literally, if you wanna type into the YouTube search bar and say, Cassandra Bankson, skincare ingredients not to mix, or Cassandra Bankson, best retinoids, we probably have videos on this because we've been doing it for 13 years. Can you believe it's been 13 years? Um, I cannot, uh, but that that is what it is. But overall, do avoid mixing really harsh actives. For example, if you're using a retinoid to get rid of acne, Panoxyl is amazing but this benzoyl peroxide at 10%, this is really drying. And mixing this with a retinoid starting both at the same time could be really irritating. Or again, if you're trying to sandwich a retinoid and you wanna use something like a vitamin C, vitamin C and retinoids don't always play well together and it could be a little bit irritating, so back off. When it comes to the perfect ingredients or products to mix with your retinoids, I always recommend things that are fragrance-free and support your skin barrier. When we're talking about supporting a skin barrier, we're talking about ceramides, we're talking about glycerin, we're talking about hyaluronic acid and fatty acids, squalene or squalene, basically the ingredients that are found in skincare that your skin creates naturally. And as a fun fact, Dermatica actually just launched their own line of skincare products. And this is different than their custom blended skincare products. You know that they create these, which by the way, they actually just rebranded. I recently got my updated Dramatica in the mail. It used to look like this and now it looks like this. And I kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of loving the update. And while they've custom blended these for years, they now actually have skincare products. And there are a lot of custom skincare brands and products that I've tried, some that I like, some that I don't. Sometimes I look at like the skincare products that the custom brands sell and I'm just like, mm, yeah, no. no. But with Dermatica, they actually launched an entire line of skincare products that are actually really good. And yes, these are fragrance free. They are filled with ingredients like ceramides. And I would say that these are perfect to mix with your prescription from Dermatica because they're made for that purpose. But even if you don't have a Dermatica prescription, these are some bomb diggity products. As an example, this is the Restoring Ceramide Skin Balm. I've been testing this out and I freaking love this. This is basically a lightweight balm. It almost looks like one of those cuticle creams or like a lip product, but it's a ceramide balm for your skin. And you can put this all over or just the areas that you're irritated. And even if you don't have like an actual prescription from Dermatica, this is so freaking good. And then I haven't tried all of these products. I recently got them, so I'm still playing around with them and patch testing them, but they even have a balancing glycerin gel cleanser, which if you have acne and you're using like a prescription strength retinoid for your acne, this is such a good cleanser because it's non-irritating, it's non-stripping, it's fragrance free, it's supportive to skin. Or instead of having oily skin, if you have super dry skin and you need something even more hydrating, they have this caring squalene cream cleanser, which is amazing for like mature or more dry skin. And I love that they call it caring, like it cares about my skin. We all need a little bit more care in this world, don't we? But overall, I'm really 
really impressed by Dermatica's skincare products. And if you wanted to find the perfect moisturizer to sandwich with your prescription strength retinoid, you could absolutely use one of theirs because they're formulated to be able to work together instead of against each other. Or again, just use something really simple from your collection, something fragrance-free, something with ceramides, something that supports a skin barrier without irritating it unnecessarily. And I will say, if you're someone who's prone to skin irritation and you try way too many products like myself, I would absolutely recommend this little ceramide balm tin. This is inexpensive, it's tiny, it's pocket size. And when I have like a pimple or like irritation, I can literally just spot this on. It's like a spot treatment, but for irritation, instead of acne, right? Even I have like a little eczema flare on my ear. I was really stressed recently. And so I picked at it until the point that it bled. I've been putting a little bit of this on my eczema flare along with my Trium Cinolone. And I just have to say, my ear is looking and feeling pretty good. Now do remember that when you're mixing products and actives and ingredients, sometimes things that you didn't even know were in the product can cause irritation. And that's why it's really good to start products one at a time. And do remember when you start layering skincare or when you start experimenting with new actives or new products, your skin may react in unexpected ways, which is why it's so important to just take photos of your skin, to check in with your skin, to see how it's feeling. Listen to your skin, they say. And I kind of hate that term because a lot of people always say like, listen to your skin or listen to your body for what it needs. If I listened to my body, I would be eating popcorn, potato chips, and spicy <laughs> mac and cheese all day long with Starbucks mochas, okay? So I know it can be hard to listen to your skin, but if you feel like your skin is getting a little bit dry or a little bit irritated, try to back off or try to take pictures so that you can get to know your skin a little bit better. And if you do find it like super complex to even understand what to mix and how to layer actives together, again, we probably have YouTube videos on it. You can search Cassandra Bankson and then like the active name, we've probably done it or you can leave it to the cosmetic chemists. Again, there are brands like Beauty Pie that combine actives together and allow you to use them on your skin or Biosans also does a great job of combining actives and squalane. Or again, if you want prescription strength actives, Dermatica. This is literally my prescription. It has tretinoin, but mine also has antibiotics for the little pimples that I get around my nose and on my forehead and on my chin and my jaw and my <laughs> chest and my back. Like literally, look at my back. I have pimples everywhere, okay? Still struggling with it. But stuff like this does help. And when leaving the combining or what's called the prescription compounding to the experts, it really takes out the guesswork. And then if you do get a prescription, it allows you to have access to other ingredients that you can't get over the counter. I will leave some of my favorite skin your supportive products below and then the little YouTube product tab. But also for Dermatica, they do have promotions and coupons, which makes it easy to afford. And then on a month to month basis, my prescriptions are under 30 bucks. Dramatica is like $25 a month. So it's actually quite affordable. And as you can see, when I use it on my face, it's actually quite effective. Whereas my back, I haven't been given a lot of care to, been breaking out. It is what it is, okay? And even just speaking about retinoids and my acne gets me to think back to the days when my skin was at its worst. I wish that we had Dermatica. Like I am so happy they exist. I am so happy to partner with them because when I was growing up, I had to see a doctor dermatologist. They gave me like 15 minutes because they didn't have a lot of time. And I didn't know how to prevent retinization. And often I would try a retinoid, be so discouraged by the redness, the peeling and the irritation that I would just stop. And then on top of that, I would have to use five different products, all prescription because one was a retinoid. You know, one was azelaic acid, one of them was an antibiotic. And it just drove me nuts because when I was 14, 15, 16, I didn't understand my skin or how it worked or how to layer my products appropriately or even the appropriate amounts to use. They were like, use a pea-sized amount. And I'm like, a pea is the size of a quarter, right? Wrong, Cassandra, wrong. Well, Dramatica does make it super easy. They also give you the right skincare to use it with. I'm just like, where was this 15 years ago when I was struggling? Again, a huge thank you to Dramatica. All of the links are listed below and a huge reminder to love your skin and listen to it, whatever that means for you. Remember that what you can do for this world has no correlation to what you physically look like. And if you are trying a prescription strength retinoid for the first time, you are now officially a certified skin intellectual and know the best ways to start to avoid that irritation. Overall, always remember to stay hydrated, both orally and topically. Always reapply that SPF, especially when using a retinoid. Always, always with the sunscreen, babes. And be beautiful, both inside and out. Out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.